Okay, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Probably the, the most consistent and the one that can be done whether you use the calculator on the computer or your own is to convert to rational power form. and then enter it on your TI-89. So what we could do here is we could convert this into A to the power of M over N, and then it just becomes a caret symbol, parentheses, M slash N. So that's how you would enter that on your calculator. And now, depending on what calculator you have, you can also use a root function. You have to have the more updated operating system on your calculator to do this. Any calculators on the computer do, don't allow it. And I'll type in or I'll show you what you do on this calculator, but even this one that I use, it doesn't, it won't show you or won't actually apply. But for that particular case, if you took the nth root of a to the m and you wanted to enter it on the calculator, you would use the root key. The root key is located in the math catalog. So you could find that under the uh, second key plus the number five. And again, that gives you your math catalog. Once you open the math catalog, and again, I'll show you where it'll be located if you have the, the updated operating system. Select number, so the first one, number. Just click to the right. And then I think it should be D underneath that. You can just scroll. I would scroll up. Scrolling up will get there faster, but it'll actually say root on there. And what you would do is you type the root, then you would put your base, so A to the M, separate a comma, and then put the index last. Okay, so root comma A to the M comma, or I'm sorry, root parentheses A to the M, to the caret M, comma, and close it off, will evaluate that for you. Like I said, depending on which uh, operating system you have, this may or may not work. The computer or the calculators on the computer will not for sure. So you'll probably stick with this form, convert it, and then type it in, but you could also do this. The advantage to using this form is it actually displays your number in this form as the radical form in the left of your on the display of your calculator. Okay, so let's use our calculators to confirm the answers we got for those last problems. So, uh, oops. so if we wanted to look at uh, 27 to the two thirds, the way that we'd entered that. We just take our base, 27, to the power of 2 thirds. Anytime you write this in, notice you need to have parentheses. Okay. So we get uh, 27 to the power of 2 thirds. And when we hit enter, it confirms our answer of 9. We can do our second problem. The second problem was 81 to the power of negative 3 fourths. Again, we take our base to the power of, in our grouping symbols, negative 3 over 4. Again, close your grouping symbols here. Hit enter, and that gives you your answer 1 over 27, which again confirms what we got by hand. And then the final problem in radical form, square root of 36 cubed. And here we can do our square root 36, close that off and cube the whole thing. And when we do we get 3 or 216. All right, the one last thing that I want to uh, make sure you are clear about regarding this is if you are entering answers online. The way that you would do that 
and I'm not going to ever talk about this again. So if you have questions on quizzes or tests, I'm simply going to refer you to this moment in time. Tell you you should have been paying attention. Okay, but if you have to enter a square root of a number, the way that you would enter that online, SQRT, parentheses, A, close the parentheses. So that's square root. Okay. If your index is a 3, a cube root, okay, you would spell the word cube, RT to represent root, and then your base here. Okay, that's not cubert. Okay. There's a little cartoon drawing back there, I believe, of cubert because I had some students a few years ago who didn't realize that it was actually referring to cube root, and so it became kind of a, a joke that they would refer to it as cubert. Okay. It's cube root, spell it out, and then put the RT. Okay. Anything beyond that, fourth root of A, you spell out the ordinal position. So fourth root RT. Okay. Do you realize this is not like go forth? This is the number fourth. Make sure you're spelling it correctly. And then anything, again, keep going beyond that. Fifth root, you spell out the position, add the RT, put whatever's inside the radical. And this extends to everything. Right? It can be eighth root, and you will get some answers to where it's beyond that. But make sure that you have this down. Okay? I, again, I'm not going to help you with this because I expect that you're listening to me when I'm talking now. Okay, the one other thing that you want to pay careful mind to is in rational powers. When you write a rational power, always use parentheses around the rational power. So this would be written as three caret symbol. Always put parentheses, so one over two. And now, it causes some problems when you have let's say uh, 2x over 3. Okay, so notice now there's two different factors in my numerator. If the different factors are in your numerator, you still are going to treat it the same way. Base to the power of, grouping symbols for your rational power. Your numerator, you can just list, divided by your denominator. So nothing changes if there's multiple factors in the numerator. If there happen to be two terms in the numerator, you do need to put grouping symbols around it. So if that was something like uh, the quantity 2x plus 1 in the numerator, you would still have to have additional grouping symbols here. Okay, but the one that causes, again, the most confusion or the most problems is something like this. Okay, if your rational power has two factors in the denominator, it's a little bit different. When you enter these, you write your base, caret symbol to the power of, you write your numerator, 2, divided by, but if you have multiple factors in the denominator of your rational power, you need to group them. You need grouping symbols here. Okay, this is different than, again, I'll write it in a lighter pen. These are two different things. If you enter something like this on your calculator, remember, even though PEM does, the order of operations acronym that you guys have generally used or you would probably use to remember order of operations, even though in that the multiply comes before the divide, that doesn't actually happen in order of operations. There is no priority between multiply and divide. Because right? dividing is just multiplying the, by the reciprocal. It's the same, prop, it's the same process. And so if you type this into your calculator, what it would think you're saying is you're taking 3 to the power of 2 divided by 3 and then taking that whole quantity times x. So it thinks that your power is 2 thirds x. And so make sure if you do have multiple factors in your denominator, you group those separately.